from the word of god amen so i i pray that uh, let uh, god's presence be upon every one of us and god, let god bless each one of us this evening as we are gathering uh, together then uh, i think uh, uh, there are some families are absent today even then uh, let us continue to learn from the uh, word of god let us be prepared enough to uh, to receive the word of god and to prepare ourselves for the second coming of jesus christ amen so uh, now i think joel yeah joel george is going to share the highlights or the main points of uh, the previous class yes joel last time we learned about six full visions about the throne of heaven in revelation chapter 4 the first point was on the throne um jesus was on the throne and the second point was around the throne john saw a rainbow and 24 other thrones and 24 elders sitting on the thrones from the third point was from the throne came flashes of lightning and sounds and peaks of thunder the fourth point was before the throne seven lamps of fire burning before the throne seven spirits of god seven sh- shows completeness and symbolizes holy the holy spirit heavenly sanctuary and earthly tabernacle in earthly temple point 5 in and around the throne four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind they are found near the throne they have six wings and they are constantly praising god point 6 towards the throne okay so it was good uh, joel uh, it's appreciated god bless you then uh, uh, so in the last class we have been uh, discussing uh, from uh, chapter 4 that was the six fold visions about the uh, throne of heaven six fold visions about the throne of heaven uh, in chapter 4 especially uh, the first one was on the throne and then around the throne then from the throne before the throne in and around the throne towards the throne so that was the main topic that we have been uh, are discussing in the uh, previous class so today we will be continuing the same point uh, point number 5 in and around the throne in and around the throne okay so i think i have given you a home uh, sorry a homework uh, for uh, for today Uh, it was something from uh, point number 5 is that right because i was i was explaining something about uh, in and around the throne what is the meaning of in and around the throne that means uh, in and around the throne there are many things in heaven that means uh, uh, around the throne in a uh, throne of jesus there are many things so that uh, in uh, uh, the vision of john he was watching all those things and i was explaining something about what are the things that uh, uh, apostle john was seeing uh, in and around the throne so i have given you the homework also to do what was that how many of you remember i explained many things and i have asked you that uh, you have to check with that verses it was from this point only from point number 5 uh, in and around the throne pastor you had asked what is the meaning of the four living creature yes okay that was the that was the that was the question or that was the homework who can give the answer for that 
That means John, Apostle John is seeing uh, uh, four creatures, four living creatures in a creature in around the throne of Jesus. So what do you mean by that? Four, uh, the four uh, creatures is the uh, four personalities of Jesus Christ. I think it's a lion is a lion of Judah. Jesus has a kingship is showing. Uh, the second one is the ox, is a servant. Jesus' servant ship is showing. Uh, the third one is a, what was it? Uh, like a man, humanity. Jesus, human, human nature, humanity. And the fourth one is a John, the gospel is describing is I am the I am, the God himself. Jesus as a as a God, as an eagle. And these yeah. four gospels are describing these four characters. You can see it throughout the gospel. Okay, good. So we are coming to that point. Thank you, Jay Sister. Actually, we have been discussing uh, about that point from uh, Ezekiel chapter 1, uh, verses 6, 10, and 22, and 26. And then after that, we have been discussing from Isaiah chapter 6, uh, verses 2 and 3. Uh, about the vision of prophet Isaiah, and also in 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 Second Kings chapter nineteen verse fifteen, we have seen uh, the the uh, King Hezekiah. Uh, God is uh, that he, his vision about God is enthroned above the cherubim. I mean, so uh, now today also we are trying to uh, continue the same point number five uh, from uh, chapter four verses six and seven. Uh, you know, and the same, uh, the symbolism of the uh, four living creatures is represented in the four Gospels of New Testament, which shows the four aspects of work of Jesus Christ. So that is what uh, uh, Jesus was just sharing, uh, trying to share about that. You know, each Gospel writers uh, reveals or portrays different faces of Jesus in, uh, in, in different Gospels. That means the total content of the book the total content of the, I'm speaking about the total content of the book. You know, each gospel writers, they are trying to uh, uh, bring out some of the aspects of Jesus Christ. That means four faces of Jesus Christ, four content of the book we can see in this gospel. For example, Matthew, yeah, Matthew, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, symbolizes the, uh, the, the lion. So in Matthew, uh, Jesus is uh, 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 revealed uh, as, as a lion, uh, as, as a total content. Okay, I'm, I'm talking about the uh, total uh, content. So Matthew shows Jesus as the lion, which means, uh, which means that symbolizes the powerful and effective work and mastership royalty of Jesus. These are the uh, representations of lion that when Matthew is uh, symbolizing uh, Jesus, as a lion, as a lion. That means the powerful and effective work and mastership and royalty of Jesus. That is the meaning of lion, which we see in, in, in Gospel of Matthew. And the second Gospel is Mark. Uh, uh, Mark is uh, representing, or Mark is showing Jesus as an ox, as an ox. So that signifies the priestly ministry of Jesus Christ, the priestly ministry of Jesus Christ. And also the ox is the animal of sacrifice. Ox is the animal of sacrifice. Okay. So that is the, that is the, uh, uh, that is what we see in gospel of Mark. Uh, Jesus is showed or revealed as an, as an ox. Then in, in gospel of Luke, in gospel of Luke, uh, Luke is trying to portray Jesus as a man, as a man, uh, which symbolizes his incarnation. You know, uh, Luke is the person who speaks about the incarnation of Jesus Christ elaborately. So that's the reason we can, we can say that we see the face of Jesus as a man in the Gospel of Luke. So uh, Gospel of Luke, man, then that symbolizes uh, the incarnation of Jesus Christ. And the fourth one, the last uh, uh, gospel is the gospel of John. Uh, John is uh, showing Jesus as an eagle. 
as an eagle and the eagle represents the gift of the holy spirit and hovering with his wings over the church so that is the meaning of the eagle so john is showing jesus the the face of jesus as an eagle uh, and uh, that represents the gifts of the holy spirit and also hovering with his wings over the church that means god or jesus uh, is hovering his wings over the church and protecting the church so this is what we understand uh, from these uh, four uh, four different gospels and the total content of the uh, uh, the the gospels for gospels now you know when you go to ezekiel chapter uh, chap uh, chapter uh, 10 ezekiel chapter 10 there uh, the four living creatures are uh, definitely identified with the cherubim okay we will read uh, once again that verses uh, ezekiel chapter 10 uh, verses 20 and 21 ezekiel chapter 10 verses 20 and 21 22 yeah these were the living creatures that i saw underneath the god of israel but the cher- cherubim canal and i knew that they were the cherubim and as for the likeness of their faces they were the same faces whose appearance i had seen by the cher- cherubim canal each one of them went straight forward okay so the cherubim uh, cherubim sir we will be explaining uh, about cherubim and at the same time uh this is a is a vision about the four living creatures uh which uh, uh, ezekiel was seeing okay in his vision and again when you read as psalm number 18 verse 10 psalm number 18 verse 10 their god is represented as flying on the cherubim and on the wings of the wind okay so god is represented as flying on the cherubim and on the wings of the Uh, I mean, uh, wind. Okay, and it it was the it was the cherubim who who was guarding uh, the way to the garden when Adam and Eve have been uh, banished from it. You know, when Adam and Eve uh, was uh, doing sin and when they disobeyed the commandment of God, uh, we see that uh, God is sending uh, the 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 angel or the cher the the, the cherubim uh, in, into the garden. and that cherubim was guarding the garden when adam and eve have been banished from uh, that garden of eden so that is what we read in genesis chapter 3 verse 24 genesis chapter 3 verse 24 okay now uh, through all these references we understand that cherubim are angelic beings who are close to god and the guardians of his throne so we are trying to make a conclusion Uh, about the four living creatures that uh, uh, apostle john was seeing uh, in and around the throne of god okay so when you study all these uh, bible references we understand that uh, cherubim are the angelic beings who are close to god and the guardians of his throne his throne so that is what we we read and what we understand from those verses so after getting all this information uh, we come to a conclusion that uh, these four living creatures stands for everything you know uh, that means the entire universe is covered with these four living creatures let me let me tell you let me explain about that thing uh, how it is it is i mean uh, it is in that way you know these four living creatures stands for everything just like the noblest one the strongest one and the wisest one and also the swiftest in the in the nature in the nature all these creatures they are there the noblest one are there strong ones are there wise ones are there and swiftest ones are there so all these things comes together in these four living creatures because you know each has a preeminence in its own particular sphere each or a, or, a, or, a, or, a, or a human being so they are having a preeminence in its own particular sphere everyone has a, everyone has a particular skills have a preeminence let us see how it is the first one is lion you know i'm talking about the lion the lion is is, is supreme among the beast okay there are many beasts there are many animals 
But we understand that lion is the supreme one among the beast. Lion is the supreme one among the beast. And the second one is ox. So ox is the supreme one among the cattle. Ox is the supreme among the cattle. Lion is the supreme among the beast. Then the third one is eagle. Eagle is the supreme one among the birds. Eagle is the supreme among the birds. Then the fourth one is man. Man is the supreme among all creatures. Man is the supreme one among all the creatures. That's the reason that when God was creating man and uh, uh, God said to them that I'm giving all the authority over you and you have the authority over all other beasts and cattle and birds and everything, all other creatures. You, I'm giving all the authority upon you that you will be ruling all these, all these animals, all these beasts and all these cattle and all these birds and all the, uh, the living creatures in, inside the sea also. So God has given all the authority over men. So let us understand the meaning of that categories. You know, lion is the supreme among the beast and ox is the supreme among the cattle and eagle is the supreme among the birds and man is the supreme among the among the cre all creatures, all creatures. And, and this is a clear picture of both nature and man. Angelic beings are always engaged in content ador adoration of God. That means, you know, the nature and also the angels and all the, all the spheres are always adoring God, praising God. They are always encased in, in constant adoration to God, especially the angelic beings. Okay, the angelic beings, you know, when you read Isaiah chapter six also, we understand that uh, always the angels are worshiping God, worshiping God, worshiping God. They have six, six wings are there and uh, they are worshiping God, worshiping God. That is the only duty that they are having. So, um, you know, uh, we have to understand one thing uh, about these things that we have to understand that everything which is coming together, that is the meaning of the four living creatures, especially we can say that these are the, these are the angelic uh, being at the same time, these all things are coming together. All things are coming together, whoever, are there in heaven, uh, in and around the throne, they are worshiping God. That's what we are understanding from that portion. Because already Jesus is there on the throne and the other people also are there. Now, we will go to the uh, sixth point. The sixth point is uh, towards the throne, towards the throne. So in and around the throne is over. Now we will go to the uh, towards the throne. That is from chapter four verses 8, 10, and 11. Chapter 4, verses 8, 10, and 11. Yes, Elsa. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And the day and night, they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the mm -hmm. Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, worthy are you, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will they, they existed and were created. Amen. Yeah, so what is that? All, it says that all glory and praises towards Jesus, right? all glory and praises towards Jesus. So when we read verse 10, when we read verse 10, we see there the 24 elders fall down, fall down before Jesus who sits on the throne and they cast their crowns before the throne. Okay, this is what we read in verse 10, the 24 elders, those who are in front of or towards the throne, they are falling down and they are they are casting their crowns crowns before the throne. So as we read these verses, 
let me let me try to give you the cultural context of the Roman Empire in those days. In those days means it is from the history. You know, uh, in those days means during the time of Apostle John, while he was receiving this vision. You know, uh, when somebody is receiving the vision, or when somebody is getting the prophetical uh, prophetical words, especially Apostle John, when he is receiving that prophetical words and the the things about the future, things about the uh, revelation or something, you know, they are trying to compare. The, the contextual thing or cultural thing when they are living in that area. So that's what we are just looking to that point, just means the cultural context of the Roman Empire in those days from history or during the time of Apostle John. So during the time of Apostle John, uh, there were 24, 24 official religions. It is from history. It is not written in the Bible. This is from history. Now, during the time of Apostle John, Apostle John means when he was receiving that uh, visions uh, from God, uh, usually there were 24 official religions and each religion had one high priest. Each religion had one high priest and these uh, priests, these high priests were the representatives of each religion. These priests were the representatives of each religion. And these religious priests were supposed to report to the Caesar, the emperor. The Caesar was the emperor of those days. And, uh, you know, uh, these all priests, these 24 priests were supposed to report the things which is happening in that religion or in that region uh, to the Caesar, the emperor. And they had a priestly garment also, these, these 24 priests. Uh, who were having the authority over this religion, they had a priestly garment uh, that is the fine white robes, the fine white robes. In, in, in this particular portion also, we see that the people, those who were uh, having that 24 elders, they were having that fine white robes. Okay, so we are just connecting that vision towards the historical and cultural uh, background of uh, uh, the time of John. So they had this 24 priests of their religion. They were having the priestly garment, which was the fine white robes. And also they had the golden sash on their chest. It is there in, in that particular verse. They had this golden sash on their chest and also a golden crown on their head, a golden crown on their head. Okay, we'll come back to that point. In a Domitian, the Roman emperor had ordered that everyone must consider him as, as a Lord and God. This, is, this, uh, this was a decree that was uh, given uh, by Domitian that every person, every person in that, in that, in that uh, emperor should I mean, count uh, or consider uh, a Domitian as a Lord and God. So what happens there? Uh, there was a practice that whenever these 24 priests together comes to meet Domitian, they were supposed to put down their crowns at the feet of Domitian. I think you are getting this point. We are trying to elaborate or we are trying to understand what is the meaning of that verse. Okay, so these people are the, the meaning of the 24 uh, elders worshiping and uh, bow down or, or falling down at the presence of the, the main throne of Jesus. Okay, we are going to connect that. So these priests, that this is the practice, you know, whenever these 24 priests that are coming together uh, to meet Domitian, the emperor, they were supposed to put down their crowns at the feet of Domitian, and they have to bow down as a symbol of their humbleness. They have to bow down as a symbol of their humbleness. And uh, when they go out from there, these crowns would be given back also from, from Domitian. So he's, he's having the, Dom Domitian is having the, I mean, crowns. And then when they are going back, when these priests are going out for these crowns, I mean, uh, would be given back, which means they have to understand that they are getting this authority from Domitian and all glory goes to Domitian. I think you are, you are getting that point. You know, when the Domitian is giving back the crowns to the priest, they have to understand one thing that 
everything that they had was submitted and surrendered in front of in at, at the feet of the domitian the emperor then when they are going back from there domitian will give back the crowns then that is the uh, uh, which means you know which means i mean they are getting the the same authority from domitian and all glory goes to domitian so uh, try to understand this statement of uh, revelation chapter 4 verse 11 we will once again read that verse and we will move on uh, revelation chapter 4 verse 11 yeah worthy are you our lord and god to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed and they were created yeah what is that in there we see that the 24 elders put their crowns before the throne of jesus eh? on the on on the basis of this historical uh, context only they were doing that okay they were i mean especially uh, Pastor john was seeing that now uh, we, we we see uh, uh, we see uh, not only not only sir you know not only 24 elders uh, uh, but also the four living creatures the nature and everything brings glory and praises uh, towards his name amen so uh, this is what we we read you know uh, who can say who are all are there in heaven in the vision of john that means near the near the throne who all are there in the vision of john who all are there in heaven in and around or in front of or uh, uh, in that area of the the throne of jesus jesus is there right jesus is there then 24 elders are there jesus is there 24 elders are there holy spirit is there four living creatures are there jesus is there 24 elders are there holy spirit is there four living creatures are there and they all do one thing that worshiping god right they all do one thing they are worshiping god bow down in the presence of at, at the throne of god and they are worshiping god giving all glory and honor unto the lord then let all glory and honor be given unto the lord jesus always praise god so this is this is the meaning of that you know even even when, when we are living in this world also we have to give all glory and honor to the lord and to the lord alone amen now uh, before we get into the study of uh, the future events uh, let me let me tell you something about four different types of interpretational methods okay you know uh, when when you go to chapter 5 there we understand about the uh, future events what is going to happen in the future especially uh, in in chapter 4 also we see that uh, the church is in heaven now before we just go to the uh, the study about the future events we have to know something about how we are going to interpret the uh, the prophetical words okay so there are mainly four different types of interpretational brothers. There are mainly four different interpretations or interpretational mothers are there. So the, the, the first one is the first one, you know, without knowing these things, we will not be able to understand what is the uh, meaning, the interpretation of uh, uh, the, the, the prophetical uh, visions and the revelations, which is, which is uh, mentioned in the book of Revelation. So uh, the first one is, the first method is uh, uh, the topical interpretation or idealist method. The topical interpretation or idealist method. I think I'm, I'm slow. Uh, so you, you are able to take down these points. Yeah, and I, I think that I'm giving the time for you. Yeah. So the first one is topical interpretation or idealist method. Idealist method. Now, there are many people uh, and there are many theologians, theologians, and also there are many scholars. They have their own ideas and they have their own views about all these things. So uh, let us see what are the main four views and what are the main four interpretational methods which uh, uh, the scholars are using to interpret 
the uh, book of Revelation especially. So the first one is the topical interpretation or idealist method. Listen, so this view uses the allegorical method to interpret the book of Revelation. Okay, this view is they are using the this is a group of people, the group of scholars, you can say, maybe a group of theologians, okay? So they are using the allegorical method of uh, method to interpret the book of Revelation. Uh, there are many things written. There are many events are there, uh, future events are there in the, in the book of Revelation. So these people are always using the allegorical method. Uh, and also this view denies the book of Revelation uh, any specific historical fulfillment, that means, they say is that there is no historical fulfillment in the book of Revelation. You know the point? They believe that there is no, there is no specific historic fulfillment in the book of Revelation. Then again, this view or this people, this group of people, they spiritualizes everything written in the book. Spiritualizing everything, each and every word which is written in the book of Revelation, that is, a, that is a great danger that we will be learning later. And again, uh, they believe that the church will go through the great tribulation. Okay, That is absolutely um, um, contradict to, contradicting to our teaching, that, that uh, we teach that the church will not go through the tribulation. Okay, Now, this group of people, they are teaching and they are always uh, 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 believing that the church will go through the great tribulation. Great tribulation means the seven years of tribulation after the second coming of Jesus Christ. So, uh, so the reason that we will not, uh, that I said that the church will not go through the tribulation is we will be raptured before the tribulation, right? We will be raptured. The believers, the Christians, the people of God, they will be raptured or they will be uh, caught up uh, with Jesus Christ before the great tribulation of seven years. So that's the reason I said. So this is the first one, first uh, uh, interpretational uh, method which some of the people are using. Now we will go to the second, uh, second main view or second main method of interpretation, interpreting the book of Revelation. That is the uh, uh, preterist view, the, the preterist view. The preterist view is the second one. Then let us see what are the specialities of these people, these, uh, this group of scholars or this group of theologians. You know, this view believes that the prophecies which is mentioned in Matthew chapter 24 and the book of Revelation. You know, in, in Matthew chapter 24, you can see many things uh, about uh, the, the things which is going to happen uh, before the second coming of Jesus Christ and uh, uh, the prophetical words are there in Matthew chapter 24 and also in book of Revelation. So this group of people, the, the, the group, the mother, uh, uh, the, the group of people, those who are following the mother of uh, preterist view, uh, they say that uh, in the, the prophecies which is mentioned in uh, Matthew chapter 24, and in book of Revelation were fulfilled in the first century with the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD. You know, we know that in 70 AD, there was a destruction which happened for the, for the Jerusalem, especially for the, um, what is that? For the, I mean, uh, temple of Jerusalem and wall of Jerusalem that we, we have been discussing while we were discussing about uh, the restoration uh, of the people of Israel from Babylon and everything. So uh, you know that, all those points. So these people particularly believe that uh, all, the, all the revelations and the prophetical words which is written in Matthew chapter 24 and also in the book of Revelation that is already fulfilled in first century itself. That is fulfilled in first century itself with the fall of Jerusalem, with the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD. And again, this view says one more thing, that book of Revelation is not the description of future events, rather the historical events already happened in the Roman Empire. Okay, these people says that 
the book of revelation is not the description of future events but we believe that we believe that the book of revelation is the dis description especially chapters 4 to 22 this is the description about the future events which will be happening in future okay but rather they they say that historical events it's, it's the historical events that means already that is happened everything which is written in the book of revelation that is already happened in the roman empire in the roman empire and also they say is that the emperor nero was the antichrist they say that emperor nero was the antichrist and that means already the antichrist came and uh, that is over the time is over everything is happened everything is already done and fulfilled that is their belief and also uh, uh, this 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 view we can see that it is absolutely wrong because because there are there are many prophecies it to be fulfilled right in 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 book of revelation there are there are many prophecies it to be fulfilled which is not at fulfilled especially one example the second coming of jesus christ the second coming of jesus christ which is mentioned in the book of revelation is not at all not at all fulfilled okay there may be something which is already fulfilled partially maybe but we can say that the second coming of jesus christ the, the prophecy about second coming of jesus christ is not at all fulfilled and also this book itself says that this is a prophetical book right this book itself okay we can we can strongly believe that the book of revelation is a prophetical book because the book itself says especially uh, uh, chapter chapter 1 verse 3 chapter 1 verse 3 says that blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and hear the things which are written in it okay so the the words of the prophecy so it says that this is the the prophetical book and there are some other uh, uh, references also which proves that this book is a prophetical book and everything which is written uh, prophetically in this book is going to happen i mean in future now we will go to the uh, third view or third method that is the historical interpretation the historical interpretation is the third view or there is a group of people they are believing in a in a different way that is the historical interpretation historical interpretation okay what are the teachings or what are the specialities of this group it is it is there in the screen that this view teaches that uh, revelation is a symbolic representation that presents the course of history from the apostles time through the end of the age okay that means they are trying to make all the things which is written in the in the uh, book of revelation as a symbolic representation symbolic representation that presents the course of history that means they say that this is a history this is a historical thing which happened from the apostles time through the end of the age that means through the end of the age means end of the age means which is this age that means which is the dispensation which is this dispensation now our dispensation is dispensation of the church or dispensation of the grace or dispensation of the of the holy spirit you can say that okay the the present dispensation or the, the present age the era era is the dispensation of grace and dispensation of Holy Spirit or dispensation of church, the New Testament church. So when Jesus is coming, the New Testament church is taken up or taken up, caught up with Jesus Christ. Okay, so the, but this particular group of people, the historical interpretation group, they say that this, uh, the prophecies which is written in the book of Revelation is a symbolic representation of the history from the time of apostles, from the time of apostles, that means from the from the uh, first century, you can say that way, from the first century till the day to day, okay, till the time of the end of the age, when this dispensation is over, 
then that prophecies are already fulfilled. Nothing is going to happen in the future. That is the belief of that people. So that means the symbols in the book represents to the events in the history of Western Europe. Okay. And they are including something else. Okay. So the various, various things are there, especially, you know, the pop, the pop of, uh, I mean, uh, which is the main, main uh, position of the Catholic Church. And these people say that, okay, so that is included in, in, that, in, in, in that time. That means the history of the Western Europe, the history of the Western Europe, and also various popes, they are coming in, in control. And uh, the Protestant Reformation happened. The Protestant Reformation happened. And also the, 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 the French Revolution happened. The French Revolution happened. And the origin of, of Islam, religion, the religion Islam, that also happened in this time. And they teach Antichrist is not a ruler, rather a system of ruling. Antichrist is not a ruler, but that means he is not a person, but it's a system of ruling. It's a system of ruling. Now, we will go to the fourth group, the fourth view or fourth method of interpretation uh, that, is, uh, that is called uh, the uh, futurist interpretation, the futurist interpretation. The fourth interpretational method is the futurist interpretation. And let us see what are the specialities of this group, this group. This group is almost matching to our teaching, to our teaching, uh, and they are following uh, the teachings which we are also uh, following. So that will be easy for, to, for us to understand what is the, the plain meaning of the uh, Bible prophecies, especially this view teaches that the events of the book of Revelation chapters four to 22 will occur in the future. Okay, that means that is not yet completed, that is not yet fulfilled, but that is going to happen in future. That is the belief. That means uh, the things or the events uh, which is mentioned in Revelation chapter four, chapters four to 22 will occur in the future. That means the futurists divide the book of Revelation into three sections, into three sections, uh, which is indicated in uh, chapter one, verse 90 which is indicated in chapter 1, verse 19. Can you read, Elsa, that verse? Uh, chapter 1, verse 19 only? Revelation chapter 1, verse 19? Yes. Write, therefore, the things that you have seen, those that are, those that are, and those that are to take place after this. Okay. Then there are three divisions. Okay. There are three divisions. Means, you know, um, the, the book of Revelation, chapters 1, to 22, it is divided into three parts there itself. Okay, what is that? What you have seen, what you have seen, then second one, what is now, and the third one, what will take place later. What is, what you have seen, then what is now, and what will take place later. That means chapter one describes the past thing, what you have seen. Chapter one, we already covered chapter one, and we have seen that the glory, the glorified Jesus Christ, the, the vision of glorified Jesus Christ in chapter one, right? Then uh, that is what you have seen already. Then in chapters two and three, in chapters two and three, it is very clear that clearly describes about the present thing. That means what is now. What is now means what? The condition of the churches, the condition of the Christian churches. That is the meaning of what is now. Okay, and the rest of the thing, okay, that is in chapters 4 to 22, okay, that is the description of the future events, what will take place later in future, what will take place future in, in, in future, I mean, maybe, maybe after the, uh, uh, during the time of uh, second coming of Jesus and after the coming of Jesus Christ. And also this group of people, uh, uh, futurists use a literal approach to interpret the revelation, literal approach to interpret revelation. So uh, we have to take something as a, as a literal meaning of the things which is written there. And also we will 
try to understand what is the spiritual meaning of those prophetical words. Amen. Now, we are taking this, uh, this group, that this method or futurist method of interpretation in our studies because this is more reliable. Amen. So now, um, uh, as we close chapter, chapter four, as we close chapter four uh, here, I just want to remind you something about the second coming of Jesus and the rapture of the church. Okay, second coming of Jesus and the rapture of the church. Because uh, from chapter four, we understand one thing that uh, that in 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 the vision of John, he saw that the church is in heaven, right, and also a tremendous worship which is going on in heaven. Okay, in chapter four, we already got that poem that when we read chapter four, we see that the church, the believers are in heaven and the heaven is opened and the throne of Jesus is there and all the 24 elders are there and fall, uh, what is that? I mean, everything is there, okay? So the church is there in heaven in chapter four. At the same time, we have to understand how can we say that church is in heaven? Okay, and how can we believe that church is in heaven? And also why? Apostle John was seeing that vision in heaven that the church is there, the people are there, the people of God are there. Okay, so the church is in heaven and also we see the tremendous worship which is going on in heaven. Now let us think about how the church is taken to heaven or the rapture of the church and the second coming of Jesus Christ. I mean, then we will go to the chapter five and we'll study the things happens after the rapture, okay? So now we are going to uh, think about how the church is taken to heaven, how the church is taken to heaven or how the rapture of the church is happened or how the second coming of Jesus is happening. Then after that only we will go to the chapter five. Now, uh, the the main heading, the next main heading is the second coming of Jesus. The second coming of Jesus. Okay. So when we think about the second coming of Jesus, this is the most important thing that we have to understand as we are the believers. As we are the believers, this is the most important thing that we have to understand from the Bible, I mean, how and when the second coming of Jesus Christ is going to happen, you know. Um, uh, first of all, let me, let, me, let me ask you one question. That why we say the next coming of Jesus will be the second coming? Who can say that? Why we say that the next coming of Jesus will be the second coming? What would be the answer? Who can give me the answer for that? We always say that, okay, second coming of Jesus, second coming of Jesus. Then why we are saying that the next coming of Jesus will be the second coming? Well, yeah. Because he already came once. What is the purpose of the, 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 the first coming of Jesus there? To gather his church. No, 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 that is second coming, sorry. To save people. Yes, any, any other answers? Being of the church. Sorry? Being of the church. To yeah. save the sinners. To save the sinners, yeah. That is also for the judgment of the people. The first coming? The second coming. No, no, I'm asking about the first coming. You know, why we are saying that this is the second coming? Because already the first one is over, right? Yes. So what was the purpose of the first coming? That is, that is my question. Oh. Yeah, answer is given there. Yeah, what is that? To, to save the sinners, to save the human being. All the people of this world, they became sinners by disobeying, obeying God through Adam and Eve. So Jesus, the first time he came to this earth to save the sinners for the, for the salvation of the people, for the salvation of the people. 
So the answer is there in John chapter 14, verse one to three. We will have to read maybe two or three verses from the Bible to, to think about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Okay, so let us read John chapter 14, verses one to three. Yes, Elsa. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Very good. You know, what happens there? You know, they, when Jesus said, okay, I'm going, I'm going to be crucified. And I, after that crucifixion, I'll be resurrected and I'll, I'll, I'll be ascending to heaven. So when the disciples were, I mean, listening these words of Jesus, they were so troubled. They were so troubled. Then Jesus answered, I mean, let not your heart be troubled. Okay. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you, I got to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. This is what the point. I will come again after preparing a place for you. I will come again. This is the promise of Jesus. This is the promise of Jesus. That means Jesus should come because he already promised to the disciples, to the people of God, that I'm going to come again. I'm going to come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. That means the first coming, the purpose of the first coming of Jesus was to save the people, the salvation of the people, the sinners. And again, Jesus promised that I will be coming back. I'll be coming back. Now, one more, one more verse we will read. Uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. <clears throat> Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. Okay, so what is that? Uh, he, here it says that behold he is coming with the clouds and every eyes will see him even those who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him so shall it be amen now this is this is a little different uh, about the second coming of jesus i will explain this verse later okay again this verse also is speaking about the second coming of jesus christ but we have to explain some more things about this particular verse, maybe in the next next point. Okay, again, one more one more verse we will read. Uh, that is also from Revelation chapter twenty two, verse twelve. Revelation chapter twenty two, verse twelve. It is it is coming there in the screen also, so it is easy for you to to read and understand. Yeah. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. Okay, what is that? In Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, it says, look, I am coming soon. When Apostle John was trying to conclude his book of Revelation, the prophetical book, he says that Jesus is saying like this, look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they have done. Amen. So these verses prove that Jesus Christ will come soon and also the second coming of Jesus Christ will happen no sooner, no sooner. Okay. So we are expecting that great event which is going to happen. At the same time, you have to understand one more thing that the second coming of Jesus has two phases. The second coming of Jesus has two phases, or you can call it as a two stages or two appearances. The second coming of Jesus has two phases or two stages or two appearances. Let us see and let us know how we can divide the second coming of Jesus Christ into two divisions or into two phases or two appearances of Jesus Christ.
you know, uh, you have to think about whenever we say something about the second coming of Jesus Christ, we think that uh, everything is going to happen at a time. Everything is going to happen at a time. But I mean, when you when you study the Bible thoroughly, you will understand everything will not happen at a time. But this coming, the second coming of Jesus Christ is uh, uh, normally it is divided into two phases, two phases or two appearances are there. Jesus will appear in two different times. Okay. The first appearance is there. What is that? The appearance of Jesus in midair. The appearance of Jesus in midair. Okay. We will go to Second Thessalonians. This is very familiar verses for every one of us. Second Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 to 17. Yeah. We will read that verse then we will uh, one by one explain all these things. Okay. Second Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through 17. Yeah. Um, Pastor Uncle, Second Thessalonians doesn't have chapter 4. Oh, oh, first Thessalonians. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, by mistake, I, I yeah, I, I wrote in there. This is yeah, first Thessalonians. Yeah. But we do not want you to be un uniform, brothers, about yeah. those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others who do, who do not have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord that, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself descend, descended from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an, with the voice of an ar, 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 archangel. Archangel, yeah. Archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Okay. So this, this, I think uh, this passage is very, very interesting, and this passage is very familiar for all of us. And uh, we have to know uh, what happens in this appearance. What happens in this appearance? That the first appearance is of Jesus in, in midair. In midair. That means what do you mean by midair? So Jesus will be will not be coming to the earth when he is coming in the in the second time. That means in the appearance of Jesus. He will not be coming down to the earth, but he will be coming up to the midair. And we will be caught up from here to to him in the midair. So that's that's what which is written. Many things are there. We will look into that points. Okay, there are uh, uh, there are uh, almost seven seven points are there. Okay, listen. So these points are written in these verses. Okay, chapter four of First Thessalonians, chapter four, verses thirteen to seventeen. The, the first one is Jesus will descend from heaven with a shout. Jesus will descend from heaven with a shout. That will happen. Second one, the voice of the archangel will be heard. The voice of the archangel will be heard. And the third one, the trumpet of shout, the trumpet of shout will be there. And the fourth one, the fourth one, dead in Christ shall rise up. Dead in Christ shall rise up. And the next one, the transformation of our body will happen the transformation of a body will happen. And the next one, fifth one, right? No, sixth one, yeah. Our reunion with the dead in Christ. Our reunion with the dead in Christ will happen. And the last one, the seventh, the, the seventh one is rapture of the church. The rapture of the church. If you have written, you just look into that Bible portion. Once again, it is very clearly written about these points. Look into your Bible. Look into your Bible. Chapter 4, verses 13 through 17, which clearly says, 
But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that who we who all are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. The dead in Christ will rise first. Listen. So what is happening during the time of the first appearance of Jesus in the midair, the first appearance of Jesus in the midair, okay? Jesus will descend from heaven with a shout. The voice of archangel could be heard and trumpet of shout will be there. Then the dead in Christ shall rise up. That is going to happen first. That means after that only, after that only, we will be transformed we will be transformed. First thing, the dead in Christ shall rise up. Dead in Christ means what? Dead in Christ means what? The people, those who were believing in Jesus Christ and the people, those who have accepted Jesus Christ as a personal savior. And when they were dying, there are many people already died. Okay, those people, if they are believers, if they are the true Christians, they will rise up. They will rise up from the death, from the death. Then what is going to happen? The transformation of our body. We are alive, right? Okay. If, if when Jesus is coming, if we are alive, okay, our body will be transformed. Okay. That's what uh, we read in uh, First Co uh, Corinthians chapter fifteen. Let us read that verse. First Corinthians chapter fifteen, verses fifty-one and fifty-two. Yeah. Behold, I will tell you a mystery. We shall not, not at all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will, will be at sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. We shall be changed. The dead in Christ shall rise up. Right? The dead in Christ shall rise up. Then our body will be transformed and we will be taken into God. Okay, so again, after that, our reunion with the dead in Christ. Our reunion uh, uh, with the dead in Christ means what? It is written in uh, uh, First Thessalonians that uh, uh, it is written like that. We caught up together, that verse 17, we are together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Okay, so that is called the rapture of the church. That is called the rapture of the church. That means the people, those who are alive when Jesus is coming, the people, those who are alive, that means the, the, the believers, those who are alive, at the same time, the people, those who are already dead in Christ, they will rise up and with them, we will be taken up. That is called the rapture of the church. Rapture of the church means the, uh, the church will be taken up. The church will be caught up with Jesus Christ. Okay, and we will be with Jesus forever and ever. Okay, so that will happen in the first appearance. I don't know how many of you are getting ready for the first appearance of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we have to think about one more thing that uh, with that I will close the class of today. You know, in First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52, it says that these all things will happen in, in, a, in a time of tinkling of an eye. Is that right? It is written in First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52. What is that? This all things will happen in the time of tinkling of, your, of an eye. Tinkling of an eye means what? Just closing your eyes and open. That's all. In a second, everything will happen. In a second, everything will happen. Okay? In this appearance, only believers will see him. That's what we read there. Okay, only the believers can see Jesus Christ coming and descending from heaven to the midair. Only the believers can see, only the true Christians can see Jesus in the midair. And when, when uh, uh, you know, when will this happen? When the first appearance will happen? 
when it is going to when it is going to occur i don't know when it's when it is going to happen nobody knows when jesus is going to come back nobody knows i don't know i don't know really okay and we we cannot set a date also for his appearance right we cannot set a date okay in this date jesus is coming we cannot set a date for the first appearance because uh, you know uh, when you read the first thessalonians chapter 4 verses 15 and 17 paul is using the pronoun we we that means that means that he was expecting to be alive when the lord returned that means when he was saying something he was expecting okay jesus is coming maybe today or tomorrow in his day in his day when he was alive okay so that that is that was his expectation so the disciples and also the apostles and all the people of jesus day they were expecting jesus that okay okay they, jesus is coming soon and jesus may come in their days okay when they are alive jesus is coming but jesus did not come now it is almost 2000 and above years are over but jesus did not come back but we cannot say that okay on this date jesus is coming but at any way at any way jesus is coming okay so this this first appearance of jesus also is known as the imminent return of christ right it is there yeah this also is known as the imminent return of jesus christ what is the meaning of imminent imminent return of jesus christ that means it can happen at any moment it can happen any moment okay uh, I, I, but as christians we do not look for any signs to happen because it can happen any at any time at any time okay so let us believe that jesus is coming soon and we do not know when jesus is coming but we know that jesus is going to come soon hallelujah so we will be looking into the second appearance of jesus christ in the next class when now the time is out and uh, uh, I'll, I'll give you one more homework for the next week what is the homework you know what would be the second appearance of jesus christ when it is going to happen the second appearance not the second coming okay the first appearance is over we already studied about the first appearance now the question the the, the homework is when will the second appearance of jesus christ will happen and in that second appearance will jesus come down to earth or in that appearance jesus will be coming only up to the midday this is the question find out from bible you got the point you got the question one more time then okay okay so we will think about uh, uh, those points in the next class if god allows and uh, now we will pray and uh, conclude our uh, our class today and uh, uh, let us all look into the lord in prayer and as we were listening about uh, the second coming of jesus christ and the first appearance of jesus christ now let us let us know that we do not know when jesus is coming but we know one thing that jesus surely come amen jesus will surely come and our responsibility is to get ready for that get ready for and be prepared enough to to receive jesus christ and we have to go with jesus christ amen so let us be ready for that and let us i mean get ready for that and god may bless all of us i request uh, uh, dear uh, ansi sister uh, can you lead us in prayer now Hallelujah, Stotram, 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 Karthavi, Nigiregi Pradhaus, Nikarthavi, Ibelia, Chidu Sankarthavi, Yangal Karthavi, Kudumangalai Karthavi, E Bible Study, Karthavi, Samadhi Ken Karthavi, and the Mahakar the Kai Stotram, Jena Karthavi, Hallelujah, Stotram, Stotram, Karthavi, in the Dathni and the New Indi Karthavi, the Vietna, the Nai, Bella Pritta, the Nai, Nani were in the Karthavi, Hallelujah, Karthavi, Adingal Karthavi, the Langregi Chikarthavi, Stotram Karthavi, Karthavi, Pray the others and Parni the Volikar. 
കർത്താവെ ജീസസിന്റെ സെക്കൻഡ് കമ്മിങ്ങിനായി കർത്താവെ ഞങ്ങളെല്ലാവരും ഒരുങ്ങുവാൻ കർത്താവെ ഞങ്ങളെല്ലാവരും ഞങ്ങളുടെ വിളക്കിൽ എണ്ണയുണ്ടോ എന്ന് പരിശോധിച്ച് കർത്താവ് മണവാലൻ വരുമ്പോൾ കർത്താവ് മണിയറയിൽ പ്രവേശിക്കാൻ തക്കവണ്ണം ഞങ്ങളെല്ലാം ഒരുങ്ങിയിരിക്കും കർത്താവെ ഞങ്ങളെല്ലാവരെയും അതിനുവേണ്ടി കർത്താവെ നീ ഒരുക്കണമേ എന്ന് ഞങ്ങൾ പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു കർത്താവ് ഹാലലിയ തുടർന്നും കർത്താവ് ഈ ബൈബിളിൽ നിന്ന് ഞങ്ങൾ കർത്താവ് പഠിക്കുമ്പോൾ അതെല്ലാം ഞങ്ങളുടെ മനസ്സിൽ കർത്താവ് നന്നായി പതിയുവാൻ കർത്താവ് അതിനെല്ലാം കർത്താവ് ഞങ്ങൾ നീ കർത്താവ് ഒരുക്കണമേ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു കർത്താവ് കടന്നു വന്നിരിക്കുന്ന എല്ലാ കുടുംബങ്ങൾക്കായി സ്ത്രോത്രം കർത്താവ് എല്ലാവരോടും കർത്താവ് നീ ഇടപെടണമേ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു കർത്താവ് കടന്നു വഴിയാൻ കടന്നു വരാൻ കഴിയാത്ത കർത്താവ് മക്കളെല്ലാം ഒത്ത് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു കർത്താവ് സ്ത്രോത്രം 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 കർത്താവ് ഇത് ഈ സമയത്തിനായി ഒരിക്കൽ കൂടി ദൈവത്തിനോട് നന്ദി പറയുന്നു അപ്പൊ തുടർന്നും കർത്താവ് അടുത്ത വെള്ളിയാഴ്ചത്തെ ബൈബിൾ സ്റ്റഡിക്കായി പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു അതൊരു അനുഗ്രഹമായി തീരുന്നതിനായി ഞങ്ങൾ പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു അപ്പ കർത്താവ് ഒരിക്കൽ കൂടി എല്ലാവരെയും സമർപ്പിക്കുന്നു കർത്താവ് ഈ പ്രാർത്ഥനയാചനയും കേട്ടതിനായി സ്ത്രോത്രം യേശുവിൻ നാമത്തിൽ പിതാവേ